Welcome to Coffee with Process OPC, a podcast hosted by Process OPC's very own experts, CEO Pyrö Perenholm and CTO Jouni Aro. In each episode, our hosts discuss everything related to OPC UA and Industry 4.0 with leading experts from all over the industry while enjoying a cup of coffee. Stay with us to learn more about Process OPC and the intriguing advancements on the convergence of IT and machines. Okay, welcome to Coffee with Process. Today we have uh, as a guest Konrad Heidrich from Hirschar. And we are going to talk about OPC UA and Open Industry 4.0 and how are they linked together in practice. But uh, first, Konrad, would you like to talk a little bit about yourself? Of course. My name is Konrad Heidrich. Um, I'm from Germany. I'm working for the company Hilscher. Uh, I started my career as an C programmer. Um, uh, was quite long related to the development, but in our days, I mainly do um, work for different um, associations, just like the Open Industry 4.0 Alliance. And I am actually the um, the leader of the Open Edge Computing Working Group. Open Edge Computing, what's that? Yeah, so what's Open Edge Computing? Actually, it is an um, like computer-based platform and we want to use uh, different applications on top of that to connect on one side uh, the, the shop floor, of course, and on the other side, IT and cloud. Um, and the way we want to do it is uh, we want to have like Lego bricks, uh, putting them together and they work more or less automatically because otherwise, like we know from the past, we all had uh, uh, quite a successful proof of concept, but they never scale because uh, the real world is always different. And this is why I really think, uh, or we from the open operating um, 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 cloud use group really think uh, we need Lego bricks to fix that problem. Okay, uh, I understood that uh, Open Industry 4.0 is, is actually kind of looking at different uh, industrial use cases and and finding then technical solutions how how different vendors could uh, like cooperate or provide a common offering that that works together and and and. Did I understand it right that the Open Edge Computing uh, platform is now trying to build something concrete to do that? Exactly. So, for example, we decided to have a Docker environment or actually to have a, a, a container environment to run different containers. On top of these um, um, containerized environment, we uh, have a so-called message broker, which is an MQTT broker. Um, to communicate with each other, uh, with, with all these different um, uh, containers. So it's basically a, a, a microservice uh, architecture. And now to get more concrete, let's say you are a company building uh, uh, field bus devices, you would be able to provide a field bus container being able to aggregate the field bus, for example, Profinet, um, see all the different devices there, provide information from these devices, um, um, for that, of course, you need to, to evaluate the uh, device descriptions um, at, with the knowledge of the, of the field bus. And then you can provide information from these devices, for example, asset information uh, to the message bus. And now let's say uh, in another project, you don't have uh, Profinet, but you have EtherCAT or some other real-time Ethernet system. Um, then you can just... Um, exchange these container with another one from another company still following the rules of the um, of the open industry 4.0 alliance and then um, you have again these agnostic information on the message bus which you can use in another application to to do something useful of that yeah yeah that's, that's very interesting and uh, I think I uh, what you chose to use is MQTT as, as this kind of a message bus, uh, but MQTT doesn't really define 
the uh, the structure of the messages within itself. So so then you uh, came up and picked uh, OPC Wave pops up JSON as as the payload for that. You took the answer already. <laughs> so what should I tell you now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this but, is true. We took the uh, OPC UA pops up uh, JSON part fourteen um, uh, to tell the numbers. Yes, we took that because uh, we evaluated the market, of course, uh, because we didn't want to to uh, just invent the wheel a second time. Um, so there are a lot of some different solutions out there in the market which you can use uh, combined with uh, MQTT. But uh, indeed, we found out uh, OPC UA popped up JSON is the best format for that. There are different reasons, of course, for that. Um, one specific reason, beside the format, beside the um, uh, functions uh, which are already included, one very important thing is uh, we always need the interoperability with OPC UA client server because, of course, we are working in industries where OPC UA is um, quite well known. Mm, yeah. Then on top of this, uh, I think you are defining like uh, certain information models and, and use case uh, based definitions, how to uh, make all the different devices then transfer information like related to uh, asset uh, management and, and things like that, condition monitoring and, and these kind of things in mind. Right. Um, we had to do that because of course we we want to have like a somehow a common common interface to that kind of information um, so if everybody would use just opc UA pops up as they want we still wouldn't get the information uh, together um, so we decided um, to have like like uh, sub models or um, um, defined uh, data um, um, data sets um, which which gives us the freedom to exchange information of the same format. So one thing, for example, is the digital nameplate. Another thing is health information. Then we have um, a so-called uh, um, config um, um, submodel uh, and also others, uh, which are always, of course, combined with with OPCA pops up metadata format to read, for example, or to in, uh, to uh, to understand uh, the data which are centered, maybe cyclic or on event based. Yeah. Would you say that this uh, it suits uh, well for the brownfield installations, especially because you were talking about all these different industrial protocols that are that are in the market already, and and now you want to like uh, define a common way how to convert all these different formats to this kind of message bus communication that is based on this more modern MQTT. Mm. So do you think it uh, fits better for a brownfield installation or greenfield? Indeed, we, we had both in mind, but we always said it doesn't make sense when it doesn't fit to brownfield. So yes, brownfield was in focus, um, but uh, uh, it's, a, it's also a clear focus for, for greenfield also. So we really think um, Having these different different uh, microservices available from all these different companies, which are interoperable to each other, uh, that really helps us in the market. Mm -hmm. But of course, especially for the uh, installed base, means brownfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And OPC uh, UA has been now very successful in in the uh, industry in general. So therefore, it's also very natural to like. Uh, use those uh, models and uh, especially the information models and the communication models that have been defined there. And and I think over four is basically saying that you want to implement technology and uh, instead of specifying it, so it's natural to take, for example, OPC UA as, an, uh, as a specification and then show the industry how to how to use this in practice. Right. Yeah. First of all, we. Definitely don't want to reinvent the wheel. I guess I said that already. Uh, of course, we want to reuse things which are already there. OPC UA did a great job uh, during the last 30 years. Um, so there are um, um, models for quite a lot of different uh, use cases. So if we can use them, we will use them. Um, 
if there is nothing available from OPC UA, so there might be some other um, uh, international uh, standardization uh, work where we can where we can take information out of it, for example, for the reference designation system to see how the structure uh, of, of assets is inside of a, of a machine, for example. Yeah. How about these uh, use cases? Uh, you uh, pick this asset uh, management use case as the first. Uh, what else have you been thinking? This is quite hard to um, to answer because uh, we, from the technician side, we define um, the like the base models which we which we can provide. Uh, the use cases are made in the in the industrial focused work groups, and so we have to mirror them with them. Like you have the use cases, we have the technology. Um, are we able to to um, to build up the use cases with with the technology we already have, and um, um, this. This is not done yet for for all use cases, but at least, for example, the um, the onboarding use case is one of the most important thing because this is like the the base of of everything um, that should be covered quite well already. But then, of course, there are other use cases. For example, you need to configure devices. You need to you may need to replace replace devices. Um, you also uh, might. Uh, want to to um, um, detect devices um, for like like um, like like working hours and stuff like that. So there are different use cases which you can handle already with the technology we, we offer today. And this uh, MQTT protocol that you picked it actually works pretty well for the onboarding because uh, it provides this kind of auto discoverability of, of new devices. You can just plug in uh, new new devices to the communication network. And then because uh, it's a publisher subscriber network, you don't need to establish the connections between uh, each and every component separately. This is actually the reason why we took MQTT. Um, there is there's no question about uh, OPC UA client server. There's the need for, but um, but connecting uh, unknown things to a network, it's always it's always a challenge, of course, yeah. when you have connected um, uh, um, or configured connections. So with MQTT, it's easy to just explain where the message bus uh, uh, broker is, and then uh, somebody will listen to the broker to the right topics to to uh, to yeah. get the information he needs. Yeah, but then there is this, of course, this practical problem that if you buy Imagine you buy a new device, you want to install it in your uh, factory and, and plug it in the, in the production process. Even if you can put it in the uh, communication bus, how do you like uh, identify it or how do you know which device it is and how does it relate to your process? <clears throat> this so. is a lot of questions in one. Yeah. Uh, first of all, of course, as, as OI4, we defined like a topic structure um, because like if if everybody again using a topic one uh, whatever he wants then it's it's hard to to rely on information it's hard to get the information because i don't know how to set the filter on on mqtt so we have a defined topic structure every um, uh, um oi4 compliant uh, member has to follow these these topic structure but after um you have implemented that um, it's quite easy because um, in this structure there is like a service type and there's like an, an um, <clears throat> um, part of the product instance URI which is a uh, unique for each for each device or for each asset and um, um, in combination with the possible filter mechanisms for MQTT um, you can quite easily detect um, um, new traffic or traffic of a specific kind. Uh, which you want to to listen to, mm, yeah. The OPC UA defines also these information models, uh, and and you could use them as a basis for your your definitions. But then uh, you notice that uh, the current OPC UA MQTT definitions, for example, are, are not supporting all the, all that you need so far. So uh, I think uh, you. 
you are now providing some feedback to the OPC Foundation from this. Right. Uh, we are in contact with the OPC Foundation and um, since the Hannover Fair 2022, we are in, uh, in quite tight contact uh, to each other. Uh, so, for example, uh, you mentioned it already, um, the OPC UA has a lot of information models, for example, DI. Um, but um, uh, internally of the DI, they have the, the nameplate, which we are using, but um, the, the clear definition for the for the pubs up um, 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 representation was was not done so far. So we made it as an as OI four, and we also defined a data set class ID for that model. Um, so we have to define uh, we have to see with the working groups how we deal with that in the future and how we um, how we can uh, provide a better understanding for. Um, um, companion specifications and their representation in MQTT. Mm, yeah, and I think this is really, really great that uh, you're kind of thinking from the perspective of these use cases, how do you want to use the technology and now you're thinking how you can use OPC UA pops up, for example, and then you can give the feedback back to the uh, uh, group that's specifying the standard and you can improve the standard in the end, but, but still showing the industry that this is the way to way to go, and and this is how they can maybe do the things the same way in in future. Right, that's definitely something uh, we um, uh, um, um, we are ready to do. And actually, thanks to Uni, um, uh, thanks to you, um, this is now even possible because you are one of the guys um, providing the contacts to the right people. Um, and now. Um, um, things uh, started to yeah to 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 get smoother yeah yeah i also tried to write articles in our blog for example to explain how how does oi4 and opc ua come together and what is technology so if you want to know the details you can just just go and uh, read those articles and and so on but uh Conrad is of course the source of the main source of this information and 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 the leader of the OEC working group in in OI4, so it's just the leader. <laughs> let's say let's say I'm writing down what the others are telling. Yeah, yeah, but someone needs to take take that uh, because otherwise those things won't get like finalized and uh, fixed. So so it's very very important job that you are doing there. Thank you. Yeah. So I I hope that uh, we can continue working together and and improving the standards and improving the industry and, and showing the industry how to do these things with with the technology that that we are all developing i hope so too i guess yeah. we can learn quite a lot from each other uh, we do have the knowledge from different fields and we should take these we should put these knowledge together and looking with different glasses to the technology to um, get the best out of it yeah 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 so thank you for being our guest here. Thanks for the nice uh, interview. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you for watching. This has been uh, one of the episodes that, uh, that we are posting and, and looking forward to having more guests here on the sofa. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Coffee with Process OPC with your host, Joni Ara. We hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as we enjoyed making it. With OPC UA becoming more and more popular in the automation world, we hope to introduce more people into this technology. So, share this episode with the people you think might benefit from this information and help us spread the knowledge together with our guest experts. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be the first to see our new videos. If you have any questions for us or our experts, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. We will be happy to try and answer all of them. We'd also like to encourage you to let us know which topics you would like us to cover in future episodes. Join us in the next episode, where we get inspired by automation and fueled by coffee.